What's going on everybody? It's your homie King Samuel. We are back. You wondering where the hell I been? Man, look here, man. Bottom line is, this motherfucker sitting right here told me, you lazy, Mr. King. You make many excuses. You're very lucky, Mr. King. You have many time and you just make many excuses. Yes, motherfucker, I got excuses because I don't like goddamn erring video. So that's why I've been putting shit out. But she's a little bit right. See, this is the problem with goddamn women. The one very few times when y'all right, then y'all just get a little arrogant, think you can just talk and control the motherfucker. But anyway, let me go get back folks. Look at that train, y'all. Look at that motherfucking train. I see that shit. Bam, there it goes. The lady just explained to me my situation. And I was like, damn. I didn't think about it the way that she explained it to me. It's hard for me to see shit the way other people see shit because I only see shit the way I see shit. You know what I mean? It's just, my roommate told me I get tunnel vision, which is it's true. I mean, I, I'm not gonna deny that. Uh, I'm a type of cat where I like to be in a team because I know I have my limitations. I, I have my very closed-minded perspective, my way of looking at things. So it's, it's better if I have people around me that can look at things from a different perspective and communicate it to me to where so when I get into my stubbornness and my tunnel vision, that they can communicate and snap me out of it and open up my, pers my perception and my perspective. But, The lady told me, you make many excuses. You are lazy. Just be natural until you get what you want. And what's crazy is, when I first started this shit seven years ago, that's exactly how I started. And that's how I got all the momentum that I had. I built up my Facebook page. At one time, I had over 89,000 people following me on Facebook before I stopped. And it's like, damn, I've done this shit before. I know how to do it. I know how to succeed on social media, but like the lady told me. You are lazy, Mr. King. Now, let me just tell y'all, please don't think that women be coming in my apartment disrespecting me on a regular. This motherfucker is an exception to the policy, okay? I'm just saying, but I don't know. I'm over here tripping because I lost my debit card about two weeks ago. I don't have a clue where it is. I don't know where it is. I, I think that I went to the bank and took some money out. And I think I left my card in the ATM and just left. But I don't, I don't sincerely know where it is. And so... I've been a little panicky trying to survive. Like, damn, I can't take out cash. I can't take out cash. It's not that I can't take out cash. I can't take out cash from my spending, my leisure account, the account that I'm using while I'm in Columbia. And like trying to transition and adjust to that shit has been crazy. But the way that the lady explained everything to me. And I'm basically, I'm just throwing away money every day. Like I, I go, I take an Uber or in drive or a taxi to eat breakfast. And that's like $5 a day, three to $5 a day. Then take it to come back home. And then when I need to go somewhere else, I take another Uber. So like I've been spending about 20 to $30 a day and just transportation. Uber, in drive, PCAP, uh, the uh, train shit, the metro shit, just on that kind of stupid shit. And then the lady told me, you need to cook, Mr. King. No restaurants for three weeks. And I'm like, oh, what? Are you fucking crazy? Don't go out to eat for three weeks? You mean, you're telling me I'm not allowed to go somewhere and have people serve me for three weeks? I'm not gonna be served? I have to serve myself? 
for three weeks? Like, wait a minute, hold on. I didn't sign up for this. This is not what fucking retirement is supposed to be. But, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. And then she said, and you can share your experience so people can know. Ah, <sighs> and I was like, damn, I guess you're right. I mean, yeah, you right. Cause I fucking hate editing videos. But I got some concepts in my mind that it's like, man, if I put that shit out, people gonna be like, damn, yo, that shit fine. So I'm sharing it and everything like that. But it makes it makes sense. I mean, it does make sense. So maybe, hopefully, this is this will be my last declaration of excuses. And now getting into a consistent rhythm of putting out my content, regardless of the presentation regardless of what I might feel would be a better video that will articulate my thoughts in a more effective way. Just say fuck it and just ride out and just do what I gotta do and eventually I'm gonna meet someone I can team up with that can uh, take it to the next level, man. But the excuses, I did not realize how many excuses I was making, how, how lazy, lazy and complacent I have gotten since I've been here. But sometimes you just need a good woman to help shift or adjust or change your perspective or help you look in a different perspective. You know, sometimes I just get so focused on this, looking at this fucking goal and I just need someone to say, hey man, keep that same drive, but shift over that way. You know, it is what it is. We're going to try it. Now, I ain't making no promises that I'm not going out to eat. I, I damn sure am not going to stay home for three weeks and not go out to eat. That ain't fucking happening. That's just not going to happen. It, it. <laughs> but everything she said, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And at the end of the day, I'm more paranoid because I just can't do like I normally would do. Like normally I go, I get up. I get up, I go exercise, you know what I mean? Then I go to get me some breakfast and then come back to the crib. Or actually, I leave from breakfast, I go get me chocolate latte, pastel, you know what I mean? And then for lunch, I go out to eat or I go buy some shit and come back and cook it. And then for dinner, I'm going out to eat. And if I need to go anywhere, I'm going to take a taxi or Uber. Like literally, I looked the other day and one week I spent over $100 in Uber. Now, in America, that's like kind of normal. You could spend that shit in probably a day and a half, uh, two days. But out here, spending that kind of money on Uber, maybe, maybe over two, three months time span, but not in one week. Like, that is crazy. She was explaining to me that the people a lot of times, they have enough money to ride the metro station, which is the, one of the more economical ways to get around besides walking. It's way cheaper than uh, Uber or a taxi. She said sometimes people, they only have enough money to ride the metro to like a stop or two away from their house, but then they gotta get off and walk another 15 minutes until they get home. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it ain't no goddamn way, y'all. Ain't no way in the hell. I literally, I ain't trying to like brag or make it seem like I'm some rich motherfucker because I'm not. But I literally have a credit card specifically, specifically reserved for Uber. So no matter where I'm at, I don't care how drunk I am, how high I am, how fucked up I am, whatever. No matter where I'm at, I can get me a goddamn Uber and get my ass home. Because one time, man, I was drunk. My fault. No, I wasn't even drunk. Well, actually, I was a little tipsy. Just a little tipsy. I was like starting to drink and I was like, oh shit, my phone about to die. And then my phone died. My phone died. I was in the center and it was getting dark. And I'm like, oh man, how the hell am I gonna get to the crib? I couldn't get no Uber because my phone was dead. And then I didn't have no cash to uh, get a taxi. 
and then I didn't have to wait to tell the, the damn uh, taxi driver where to exactly, you know what I'm saying, where to go. So it was a really fucked up situation. I ended up walking um, most of the way back to the crib. Uh, but I don't ever want to be in no situation like that again. You know what I mean? So, like, I really, a few months ago, I just adjusted how, how I do shit. But now... Like being in this situation without a debit card, it's not. It, the sad thing about it is, I really don't need to spend money. It's more of a habit. Like, damn, bored. I'm gonna get out the house, go spend some money. But the way she was explaining, she's like, you could be doing this, you could be doing that, you could be doing this. You are very lucky. The people around here, they don't have this, blah, blah, blah. Now I really be comparing myself to other people, and yeah, man, that, that shit just whatever i position myself to be financially stable it took me a couple of years to put myself in this position but it was intentional i intentionally put myself in a situation where i, I you know i just make sure i'll be straight financially every month but um like i don't be evaluating my situation and comparing it to these motherfuckers around here you know because i just be thinking about what the fuck i got going on and then to be even more transparent this whole uh visa process honestly the interactions with my kids it's weird like i want to see my kids but if i if i talk to my kids for like three days in a row it's like all right goddamn it y'all need to stop calling me. <laughs> i need about a good let me miss you before you goddamn call me shit i mean i love my daughter but sometimes it's like okay baby girl just give me a couple of days, all right? Let, let your father miss your voice before you call me again. But she mean well. It's all good. And that's another thing. I'm paying two fucking cell phone bills. Why? Why? I barely use one phone. And when I use the phone I'm using, like the phone I'm on now, I'm on Wi-Fi. Why the hell am I paying for two cell phone bills? Like, I'm out here doing stupid, stupid, stupid shit. But no justification. I guess I said all of that, of course, to share in my experiences, but also sometimes, you know, even being a strong man, being an independent man, being a, you know, whatever you want to call yourself, you just got to have that feminine energy in your life to, to keep you stable, to keep you, give you balance. Uh, sometimes they're good for perspective, but see what the problem is, you know, you can, you can have a good feminine energy in your life, but these motherfucking women, they just get a little too complacent and a little too confident. And then they start trying to make this shit about them, thinking that they supposed to be the priority in your life. And they're like, no, motherfucker. I'm the priority. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all good, though. So this is my declaration. I appreciate all you weird motherfuckers that be following me. And I really don't know why half of you stupid people follow me. Like, a lot of you motherfuckers don't even speak my language, but every time I put something out, you got them liking it and commenting and sharing my shit. And it's like, what the hell? Yeah, I know your damn po ass in India don't speak English, so why? But anyway, it's all good. I appreciate it though. And I'm gonna keep talking shit about you motherfuckers. And I don't give a goddamn if you get offended. Cause if you get offended, bitch, you ain't got to listen to me and your stupid ass ain't got to follow me. So fuck you, motherfucker.